This is the story of a boy who is considered worthless by everyone as he is always bragging about this and that. But the boy meets a rich girl. Let's see what happens from then on. Welcome to Movie Recall. In today's video, we'll be going through the 1991 comedy romance film Career Opportunities. It's time to recall. Let's get started. Turn on subtitles and spoilers ahead. The movie starts and we see our main guy Jim Dodge reading a newspaper. Jim is a pretty confident man. He likes to think of himself as someone who has figured it all out, but in reality, he does not even know what he is talking about. We see the Jim monologues to a bunch of dogs while he is at work. He then expresses that he is proud of himself for making up stories and being able to lie on the spot. Jim is the kind of boy who spends more time talking than working. That is why even the dogs at his workplace seem sick of him. His reputation among the people around him is not so good as they think of him as someone who can just talk and talk and he is absolutely useless when it comes to practical work. We then see him creating yet more stories about creating cow hearts and buying and selling animal shelter from which he just got fired. While he is telling the story of being fired, Jim tells the kids that he is actually a very rich person and has established himself in the animal business. He then says that he has several cars and workers, but everything he tells the kid is a lie. He is just telling it to a bunch of kids, not adults, because he knows adults are going to laugh at him. We see that Jim never stops talking. This is why he tends to weird everyone out around him, and getting cold shoulders everywhere is normal for him now. After that, he goes to a restaurant, and there he talks to the waitresses about the different kinds of foods he has eaten. Jim is now jobless, and he is looking for a job. He goes to a gas station and begs the owner to give him a job at his station. We then get to know that Jim has already worked at the gas station, and that means Jim has gotten fired by this very man, not once, but multiple times. Jim even goes to the extent to say that he is ready to work for free, but the station owner does not seem to have any soft spot for him as he does not allow Jim to even work for free. He then encourages Jim to leave town in search of greener pastures. When it has been made abundantly clear to Jim that his begging is not going to work with the owner, he gets up to leave and this is when he sees a beautiful and rich girl named Josie. As the girl arrives in her fancy car, Jim starts to act like a gentleman. Josie notices Jim and she apparently likes the made-up behavior exhibited by Jim as she giggles and waves while sitting in the car. Just as Jim and the girl start to lock eyes, Jim's father, Bud Dodge, who seems to be sick of his irresponsible son, comes from behind and confronts him about not having a job. Jim right away lies to his father saying that he did not get fired and goes on to tell his father that he himself resigned. His father then drags him to the truck and drives him home. Well, not the first impression Jim would have liked to leave on the girl. At night, when they are having dinner, Jim's sister mentions that Josie has left town as she's moved to New York. Jim says that she is still here as he saw her earlier that very day. He even goes on to add that they had a cup of coffee together and his father looks at him in surprise. After that, Jim's father goes on to tell the family that Jim has lost his job yet again and is no longer going to be able to pay the rent. The next morning, Jim's father seems pissed off at him as he is sleeping till late. He wakes him up and drives him to a mall named Target. While they are in the truck, Jim's father tells him that if he does not get a job at Target, he will be sent to St. Louis where his uncle lives and he is a gardener. Jim does not like what he hears and tries to emotionally blackmail his father by asking him if he wants Jim to move out of his life, at which point his father tells him that he just wants him to move out of his house, not his life. After being dropped off at the mall by his father, Jim goes inside to interview for the job. During the interview, the mall director thinks that he is interviewing Jim for another vacancy, a vacancy for which Jim is not there. Jim also goes along with him and does not bother to tell him that he is mistaken. When he offers Jim a number, Jim says that this is not the number he had in mind and then goes on to say that the number he had in mind is 45. The director agrees and Jim quickly accepts the offer. As they are about to conclude the interview, the director receives a call and he is informed that the person intended for the job missed his flight and he is going to be a little late. The director then realizes that he is offering the job to an entirely different person who is not even suitable for the job. The director then goes on to offer Jim work as a night cleanup boy for $4 an hour and Jim accepts the offer. In the next scene, we see Josie's rich father having a meeting with two gentlemen. When Josie comes in, his father asks her to greet the two gentlemen. Josie goes over to one of them and to her father's surprise, she gives the man a peck on the lips. After the meeting is over and the men leave, Roger right away goes to her daughter's room and warns her not to repeat what she did earlier ever again. The same night, two men are seen stealing a car. 
The next day, Jim yet again surprises his father and everyone else as he hires a limo to drive him to work. While Jim is in the limo, he runs into the kids he usually tells his fake stories. He tells them that he is headed to the airport to board a plane to Paris because he has a meeting with the vice president of Bulgaria. When Jim reaches his workplace, he starts acting like a boss to the other employees who have no idea who Jim is, not yet. Josie is also at the mall as we see her shoplifting. At night, when the mall is closed, Jim's boss, the head custodian, comes to him and explains everything that he has to do, from cleaning his coffee maker to making sure that every corner of the mall is clean. Jim is shocked to hear everything that the man explains. When he is done giving instructions, he locks the mall from the outside, and Jim realizes that it is just going to be him in the mall for the whole night. Jim yells that no one told him he was going to be alone in the mall overnight, but the boss does not give a crap about it as he drives away without even looking back. Before he leaves, he also sets the lights to go off, leaving only the aisle lights on as he is afraid of getting a big electricity bill. After a while, Jim seems to have made his peace with it as he gets on with the cleaning. As he starts cleaning, he seems to have difficulties operating some of the equipment. When he is working, he takes a break and starts eating snacks at the store. He is then bored, so he decides to call his parents to discuss the Christmas plans with them, but they seem to be in no mood to chat and hang up the phone as it is too late. Jim then goes on to explore the mall and actually starts to have fun as he goes on to beat some drums. He then brings out a pair of skating shoes, puts them on, and glides around the mall. As he moves around the mall, he spots Josie out there. Seeing her, he gets shocked and ends up falling on some stuff in the mall. In the meantime, Josie's father goes to the police station to report his missing daughter, and they start to look for Josie. Back at the mall, Josie tells Jim that she fell asleep in the mall. She goes on to reveal that she was contemplating whether she should get arrested for shoplifting, but then she changed her mind. She then goes on to reveal that she is not happy living with her father as he is not a very pleasant man. Jim then feels hungry. He uses the microwave of the mall and prepares a meal for himself and Josie. Jim then tells Josie that his father is a cement contractor and he is the one who poured the cement for the pool at her house. Jim keeps on talking and Josie notices that he never shuts up. She eventually asks him if he usually talks that much and to everyone's surprise, Jim says, not really. Josie then points out that Jim should try going into sales as it would be much better than what he's doing right now. Jim tells her that he has tried doing it, but it did not go well for him. After eating, they sit together to talk and Jim brags to her that he likes to smoke an expensive cigarette after a meal and Josie goes on to tell him that she is the one everyone calls the town liar. Jim gets upset for a moment as he gets to know that everyone is calling him a liar, but he soon shakes it off and starts talking yet again. Josie then tells Jim that he still has a lot of cleaning to do, but Jim says that there's still a lot of time left until morning. She then says that she planned on stealing some goods because she wants to get arrested and that way she'll be taken away from her father, who she seems to despise. Josie then tells Jim that he is lucky for having a life he likes, but Jim does not agree as he is anything but happy working as a night cleaner. Jim then gets offended as he thinks Josie is just pointing out the bad things in him and gets back to cleaning. As Jim does the cleaning, Josie puts on some rock music and Jim starts vibing with it. When Josie sees him dancing, she turns off the music. Josie then uses the PA system to speak to Jim as she says that Jim should just tell her the truth about what he wants from his future or if he just likes living in his parents' house. Jim responds that he was not lying to her earlier and then Josie comes out. Both of them then have a conversation about what they want and Jim finally accepts that he was lying. The two then start to talk about the negative things in their lives. Jim says that Josie, who is a very wealthy person, wants to steal in order to get away from her unpleasant father. Josie says he is wasting the freedom he has. Jim then says why Josie could not just talk to her father or simply leave him. She tells him the same reason he cannot leave his parents. Both agree that it is the fear of living alone that does not let them move out. Josie then says that both of them should leave town and move to California. Jim does not agree with her, but when she tells him everything her father does to her, he agrees. Josie goes on to reveal that she has $52,000 in her purse. They can use this money to run away and start a new life. The two agree that they are going to run away in the morning. They then dance together, and as they get close, they kiss. Josie's father, along with the sheriff, arrives at the mall looking for Josie. They ask Jim if he has seen Josie, but he lies, saying he hasn't. Afterward, Jim and Josie start to have fun as they wait for the morning. The two crooks then manage to break into the mall, and as Jim and Josie are skating, they see Nestor Pyle and Gil Kinney standing in front of them, but as Jim and Josie see them, they get unbalanced and accidentally knock out the two crooks. 
When they see that the two of them have gone unconscious, Jim and Josie run to hide. However, not after so long, the thieves wake up and start to look for Jim and Josie. They find them and ask both of them to lie down. They then start to interrogate both Jim and Josie about their identities. Jim tricks the thieves and forces them to surrender. As they do, they tell Jim that the gun he is holding is not loaded. Jim then offers a truce, giving them back their guns. As he does, they reveal that they are indeed loaded. Eventually, Josie seduces one of the crooks and convinces him to take her with them after robbing the store. While the criminals are loading stolen merchandise into their car, Josie jumps into the front seat and drives away, leaving the two men stranded in the parking lot. Meanwhile, in the building, Jim loads up a shotgun found in the head custodian's locker and tricks Nestor and Gil by luring them to the back of the store and holding them at gunpoint. In the morning, the police officer arrives and stumbles upon the two crooks, having been tied up by Jim. Jim and Josie run away and are then seen lounging next to a pool in Hollywood. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell icon to get new movie recaps.